Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. Hi, I'm Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter. You're going to get lots of free stuff and learn more about natural healing. Now, today's guest is Les Jensen. Les is an energy healer, author, and radio host. His most recent book, Citizen King, The New Age of Power, was published by Balboa Press in July 2015 and talks about how you can show up in an authentic and powerful way, fulfilling the vision of your heart and soul. In 2013, Les wrote Personal Power Fundamentals, an ebook that reviews the fundamental nature of your personal power, including how to overcome one's karmic propensities. You can find out more about Les at his website, newhumanliving.com and lesjensen.com. And while you're there, you can listen to his fabulous radio show. Welcome, Les Jensen. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So Les is a master energy healer, so uh, which is one of my personal topics because when people come to me, I find that the number one problem that my new clients have is energy problems and exhaustion. That's why I wrote my Amazon number one bestseller, Unlimited Energy Now, because we all need energy to do whatever it is that we do. So, Les, how does our own personal energy affect our health? Well, our, our energy, when we talk about our personal energy, we're really talking about a, a multidimensional aspect of ourselves. When we look at our culture, we can easily see people that are very heavily laden with dance energy. Otherwise, I like to refer to it as karma. For example, uh, a war vet that has PTSD and he's standing on the corner panhandling for coin, he's having a tough time getting through the minute or the hour, let alone the day. And so when we talk about energy, he has loaded his consciousness up with an immense amount of karmic density, if you will. And, and when our energy goes down, our health goes down with it. Now, you used the word karma. And in my work as a medical intuitive healer, part of what I do is actually clear karma and identify karma. And there's a karmic healing that I do. What sure. would your definition of karma be for our listeners? Anything that is not light. I mean, now that's a really general term, but the truth of us is we're a, we're a very multidimensional, powerful, spiritual soul that has come into a human body. If, if you think about a brand new soul, brand spanking new out of the soul factory, there's no karmic propensity. There's no human experience either. So there's no density of energy in their persona. They're basically light. They have not had any karmic imprinting. So karma is when you carry energy over time. That's a really simple term. But anytime you have a density of energy that, that is sustained in your personal energy persona, it carries a karmic attribute. Now, we're looking at it at a very general point of view but i think that'll really help when we when we go to get the last mile done so so often when people work with their karma they'll get enough to get back on their feet and functional and they won't go back to the table which is why i mean for so many people just to become functional is a wonderful wonderful thing and that's fine now i would say that when i do my karmic clearing when I'm doing a healing on clearing karma, there's really four aspects that I address in, in karma. One is on the what we call the mind grid level, which is mental emotional. What are your thoughts? What are your emotions? The second is at the DNA level because you know we're getting uh, 
we're literally programmed at the cellular level from not just our parents, but our grandparents going back all the way to generations. I believe if you go back seven generations, because I do a seven generation healing also, when you go back seven generations, you're talking to roughly 1.75% of your DNA. Then you've got karmic contracts. So you and I might have a karmic contract and I'm here to help you or you're here to help me. Or we could have a mutual karmic contract where we're here to help each other. And then finally, there's karma all the way at the core soul level. So that's sure. the way I see it. Where do you see karma as actually residing? The Well, if we look at it from an energetic point of view, most of our karma exists in our subconscious. Um, I, I very I have very similar uh, models or ideas about the nature of karma being mental, emotional, spiritual, etc. But again, it it goes back to a density. Um, when I became a, first awakened to the notion of karma as personal energy within my persona, it totally cleaned my clock. I, it was such an unexpected event when in a, in a fleeting moment, an immense amount of energy became conscious to me that I wasn't aware of. And then as it left, I could feel the, the attribute of the energy. And, and that began, this was like 20 years ago, and it began uh, uh, for the rest of my life, uh, a personal pursuit of the nature of karma, the nature of our personal power, and how those two are related. Now, what is our personal energy persona made of, in your opinion? Our consciousness. The, our physical body is a fountain of atoms. We put in new atoms, and, and the old atoms go out the back door, and, and so the new atoms have no, they're um, indifferent to us. They don't have any energy related to us until we consume them. Um, but our consciousness has been, been here all the time. We don't, uh, there's no energy in our environment per se in general. Like we don't absorb electricity and store it up. We don't absorb radiation from the sun and store it up. But if I hold bitterness or if I suppress anger, my emotions will certainly store it and, and I'll accumulate more and more energy as time goes by. And if I look at that, what is that? Well, it's my feelings. It's my, it's my feelings, which is my own consciousness that I've not been able to allow myself to feel and so we suppress it and every time we do that we're pushing more energy into our subconscious you can think of when you go into shock you quit feeling if you look at ptsd on the battlefield i don't pretend to even dream that i know what that feels like but when you go into shock you quit feeling and all the feelings you would have had in that moment are an immense amount of feelings that you're pushing into your subconscious. PTSD is episode after episode after episode of just that. And over time, they load themselves up and they have nothing but fumes to run on as far as life force energy. Now, my experience of working with shock, and, and shock to me is quite interesting because you can go into shock, for example, after 9-11, when the terrorists hit the Twin Towers in New York, it took all my clients out of shock. And it's the same technique if I have a client, for example, who falls off the roof. But it's my experience that we actually hold shock in our body. And when you go into shock, your nervous system is stuck in the sympathetic side. You've got two sides of your nervous system. The sympathetic, which responds to stress, and the parasympathetic, which allows you to relax. So when you're in PTSD and when you're in stock, shock, you're stuck in that stress state. And even though you think, oh, I should relax, you literally can't. And you're stuck sure. in you know, just replaying the, those stressful emotions over and over and over again. And you talked about 
you know, the veterans, bless their hearts, who literally sacrificed their mind and bodies for our country. But lots of people go into shock. Uh, victims of abuse, for example. You bet. Victims of abuse. And, um, and shock is quite interesting, but you, you also hold shock in your joints. So a lot of joint pain, foot pain, ankle pain, knee pain, hip pain, wrist pain, elbow pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. That's your body holding the shock in the joints. Sure. Now, tell us a little bit more about, I know that you began your life work as an engineer in broadcast television, where you worked every day with high power television transmitters. That's a lot of energy. And I know in my work as a medical intuitive, a lot of times I find clients who are very sensitive to EMFs. Um, how, you know, we get those from cell phones, microwave towers, microwave ovens. So how did you, tell us more about your personal experience around all these high energy uh, equipment. Well, um, it was my job to build very high power, uh, the highest power t typically in the industry, um, like a TV station will have a million watts of power leaving the antenna. And I, kn I know there's a lot of uh, concern over EMF or radio frequency energy in our environment. Um, one of the biggest culprits is that that thing that comes up every morning, the sun, it has an immense amount of RF energy that bombards the planet all the time. Now, we're very powerful beings. We're very powerful beings. If we're afraid of something, if we're genuinely afraid of something, it doesn't matter if it's a snowflake or an avalanche, it will influence our sense of health. Certainly RF can be a potential hazard. When you cook food in a microwave, you're using RF to cook food. But overall, RF exists in nature in, in, in a very prominent way. And it's been in our environment since the beginning of time. The worst thing we can do is be sincerely afraid of it. Most of the energy that is, is propagating around in our metropolitan areas is not at a substantial level to have an immediate detrimental effect. If, if we sit there and focus on it and we're afraid of it, we, our own consciousness, will be what brings on the disease in our relationship to it. Yes, certainly we need to be um, uh, conscious of what is being proposed in some of the, some of the um, industries out there use a very prominent amount of energy, but typically, Overall, it's, it's uh, you can go through your whole lifetime. I, I worked in the buildings where they were made for 30 years and I haven't felt better in my life. I feel vibrant and young and, and I'm, I feel like I'm getting younger. And so I, I work with it all the time and it doesn't affect my health. Very, very interesting. And, um, how, how, why do you think that it hasn't affected your health? Because indeed you look quite young and you have great, great chi, which is always good when, if you're an energy healer, you got to have great chi, you've got to manage your chi. So what is your personal health practice? How do you stay so healthy here at the Natural Healing Show? We want to know your health secrets. Well, I, I learn how to, uh, ground myself and center myself. And I've been, I, I scrub my personal energy persona all the time, all the time, all the time. I'll be sitting in traffic and I'll find acupressure points that are sensitive. And if I push on that right now, I can feel it down the spine of my back and a little bit in my hips and I can clean it and wash it out in the moment. And I've been doing that for 20 years. So, like um, if my life gets busy and I interact with a lot of people socially, I can feel this, this um, 
accumulation of, of uh, energy that puts me out of balance and it might be other people's energy and it might be mine I don't care I don't care whose it is I'm out of balance you know, you and so I'll periodically really hone down as soon as I get a break in my in my schedule I'll I'll find my center again and once I have that that snapshot of what pure is, then I'll, I'll wash my whole persona and restore myself back to balance and being grounded. Now you bring up something really important, Les, which I really appreciate because many of us in natural healing are aware that we need to eat right and eat organic foods and take supplements and exercise and get enough rest. But as we learn more about who we really are as human beings, part of taking care of our health naturally is actually managing our energy system, whether it's managing your chakras, manage your acupuncture system. I know my book, uh, The Difference Between Pain and Suffering, teaches you how to trace your own acupuncture meridians. So sure. how, how did you learn how to manage your energy system? Well, it was quite accidental. <laughs> um, um, I had, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, I had a very, very pronounced energetic episode that really startled me. Um, before that moment, I was a TV engineer, and that was all I was going to be for my entire life. And after that moment, my life opened up like a, a butterfly, and now I'm a writer, I'm a radio host, I'm a visionary, I'm an energy healer. Uh, when I first started working with it, I would work with like uh, just l localities within my body. And then after a while, I started working across my whole personal energy persona. And I got much more pronounced effect by doing that. And over time, um, it, it's like instead of working on one thing or another, I would work I would clear out a hundred things in an episode. And over time, we're, um, if you look at the scale of human consciousness, so, so we talked about a, a panhandler with PTSD. Let's go on the other side of the scale. Perhaps that's Jesus or Krishna or somebody who does instantaneous healing just by their presence. If we were to just put a context of the scale of that human consciousness, that's an exponential scale of power, raw power. And that power comes from love, unconditional love. Love is an immensely powerful thing. And to, to be able to embody that love, love by its very nature will not do anything that'll in, elicit fear and if we have unresolved karma in our psyche, love will not blow it out because it'll scare our egos. So as we start to work with energy, teaching our ego about what's going on, allows the ego to relax and allow the energy to move at very, very high levels, and you can start to get very significant effects. In order to traverse the higher levels of consciousness, to, to awaken to them, the karma is very dense in our psyche. And to most people, it feels normal because they've never felt anything else. You sit and you feel, how do I feel? Well, I feel normal. But in that normalness is a density. And the denser the karma, the more power it's holding within our psyche. And to open up that density is a very, very, very powerful thing to do. And when you do that over and over and over again, Wow, your, it, um, your life changes in so many ways. Now, how do we accumulate energy into our personal energy persona? The only time we can ever change, add, add energy in, break even, or release it is now. Now and now in the current moment. So just like when the vet the war veteran went into shock, their, their psyche could not process what was stimulating them. And so since they were not allowing themselves to feel it, and that might be a very good survival thing to do, anything we 
don't accept about the moment gets pushed into our psyche, into our subconscious as karma. So we accumulate everything that we judge, everything that we posture with, everything that we reject, to accept everything as it is, to love all of life as it is now, is how you traverse time without accumulating karma. Very, very interesting. Now, how does this relate to our hereditary influences? For, for example, in, in my family dynamic, our souls look at the family dynamics we're born into, and there's karmic lessons that are chosen based on, on the family dynamics. My dad was a World War II vet. He was a big, big, big guy. He cut you in half with his, the gaze of his eyes. And when he got mad, he had gone through war. He had gone through very, very brutal human experiences. When he got mad, you couldn't make yourself small enough. You tried to become invisible. And you saw the fear on mom's face and on, and on the sibling's face. So the family dynamic was, don't you dare show anger. Don't you dare bring up anger. And anger was, was the most prominent karmic attribute that I had, and I wasn't even aware of it. I'm, I'm 35 years old. I have an immense amount of anger in my psyche, but hey, I'm an easygoing guy. Why are you talking to me about anger? So my, the family dynamic handed me this baton that said, oh, anger is going to drive your life like a bolt through a china shop, and you're going to have no control over that until you're about 35 and you awaken to that. Now, Les, if our cells reju rejuvenate every seven years or less, why does dis-ease persist? Because the energy in our subconscious doesn't change. When I, re um, in, I, I keep relating to this episode that changed my life, I, I was in a psychiatrist's office and, he, and we had been uh, working on me for a while and he's like, Les, let's talk about anger. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And he puts out his hand and he says, come on, show me, show me your anger. I'm like, okay, this is a waste of time. I push on the hand, nothing happens. He kind of gets in my face and goes, look, really, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay for you to show me your anger. Now he put out his hand again and he said, come on, push on my hand. And in that moment, my whole life changed. An immense, just like turning on a transmitter, my soul prepared me for that experience. An immense amount of energy is flown out of my psyche. I, I quite vividly remember going, who the hell are you? And the anger's like, oh, I don't care. Think of me what you will. The, the karma was impersonal. As long as I had that anger in me, I had ulcers coming on, I had digestive tract issues, my, my dis-ease of my cells were based on the unresolved karmic imprinting within my own psyche, and it had nothing to do with the cells themselves. Yes, and, and you bring up a really important point. What is the scope of energy as it relates to our spiritual health? Well, <laughs> whoa, I love that topic. Um, who are you to be divine? Who are you to be the savior? Who are you to be the healer of humanity? Now, humanity's clicked off several eons of lifetimes, and every sage, savior, priest, pope, lord, every single spiritual being has come and gone, and here we are still suffering with homelessness and war and deceit and pain and misery. The way you see yourself spiritually is like a permission slip. And, and it plays hand in hand with how much karma you have. As you start to clean out your karma, your energy level goes up. So say you do energy work like perhaps Reiki or healing touch. If your karma has loaded you up, you don't have very many watts. You don't have a lot of energy that you can move. 
certainly, certainly every single time there's an intention to heal, it's a good thing. But you go in there and start releasing vast amounts of karma and your energy goes, starts to go up off the chart and your soul says, you want to have compassion for humanity? You, do you want to be a vehicle of love through your persona for another? <laughs> and you say yes to that and, and your soul will guide you into episodes where your persona is the vehicle of divine love to, to transform the karmic imprinting of the environment of the condition. And the coolest part is leaving a wake of grace. Unconditional love is so eloquent and gentle that the condition is resolved in the moment. But if you only see yourself as a seeker, as a worshiper, you're not going to be able to embody unconditional love for another. You have to see that the divinity of all of humanity doesn't come from somewhere outside of us. It comes from within us and comes out into our, our culture and our struggles. Why do you think that most people hit a plateau when it comes to clearing out their own karmic energy? Their life gets tolerable and they stop there. <laughs> and I have to put this in context. When I, when I first started doing energy work on myself, I felt like a 50 pound sack of potatoes. I felt dense. I had no sense of this, this endless well of love and passion and, and peace within me. I didn't have any sense of that. But what, I, th I think my gift to humanity is all that time I spent with transmitters learning the nature of what's power. What's the difference between one watt, a hundred watt, a thousand watts, a hundred thousand, a million watts. Let's flip that over to healing. What's the difference between uh, PTSD and, and Jesus? A lot of power, a lot of power. Well, what the hell? How does that show up in me? How can I be the personification? Jesus said, well, you can, you'll do everything I'll do. Come on, come on, get on with it. So we have to give ourselves permission. We have to attune our bodies to be able to move an immense amount of energy. We have to teach our egos not to be afraid when immense amount of energy moves. And, uh, the more you sign up for that, the bigger the vision of your life becomes. How does our personal energy persona relate to your spiritual ascension? As you purify your persona, as, in other words, as your power level starts going up and up and up, say you're, you're at 10,000 watts and you're at 100,000 watts and you're at 500,000 watts and you're at a million watts and then a billion watts, your ability to be the vehicle. When people pray, like uh, the story of Moses, the slaves are praying, this sucks, get us the hell out of here. We've had enough. Prayer after prayer after prayer. Not a single time ever did a glowing orb come down out of the sky and zap everybody's ass and set the slaves free. Flesh and bones came along. You have to have a ticket, which is a physical body. You have to have a ticket to be a vehicle. So as you purify your persona, your ability to play a bigger and bigger role in the healing of humanity starts showing up as a possibility for your future. This is really a very, very cool thing. The, the vision of my life continually expands, and I've gotten used to that. My soul shows me ever, ever bigger and bigger visions of what I'm gonna be doing in the future, and all I ever say is, okay, let's be doing it. I don't want to say no ever again. It's so way cool to show up in a powerful way because that power is love. And the more you can do it, love, love feels really, really good. <laughs> that is so true. 
Now, how does our own personal energy relate to our ability to perform energetic modalities such as Reiki or healing touch? I, I know that I feel strongly that anyone who is an energy healer needs to have personal practices like prayer, like pranayama, like um, breath work, like meditation, like yoga, tai chi, qigong. We've got to manage our own energy if we're going to be doing energy healing with others. So what are your thoughts on that? You bet. Absolutely. Now, b before I got woken up, I had an immense amount of, of anger in my psyche. So had I been a practicing uh, Reiki uh, practitioner um, and somebody came to me with an immense amount of anger, I, I would not have any effect on them because I had that issue myself we can't heal something that hasn't been healed within us. You, you can think of it as a spectrum of colors and you might be really bright in red and yellow, but you're dark in blue and green. And if every one of those uh, conveyed to a particular dis-ease, then the reds and yellows you'll, be, you'll get good results with and the blues and greens will be uh, so sore mediocre the intent is always wonderful, but the more you clean your psyche, the more you raise your power level, the more influence you can have with your clients. And as you probably know, if they have a sole contract to have cancer or to go through some disease, it's not gonna move if you want it to or not, because it's there for a reason. And, and that's what's nice about love, it understands though, the whole ball of wax, if you will, about why everything is the way it is. But I tell you what, when somebody comes to you and they're ready to let go, it'll come off of them like frosting off a cake. It's just, it just, it's so wonderful when they're ready and the energy is just dormant and kind of stagnant and you flush and it, and it, that's a wonderful feeling. What does cleansing the denser energy have? What effect does cleansing this denser energy have on our outlook on life? It uh, uh, that plateau that you reach is the the energy that you're aware of. I feel uh, unsettled. I feel upset, uh, especially during the holidays. Ding dong, and here's the relatives. Oh Jesus. I mean, those are the things you're, you're aware of, but in a, in a soul's journey, when a soul starts off as, as purity, and then we go through many, many, many lifetimes and accure, uh, accumulate a density of karma, I suggest you this lifetime, this one right here, not the next one, this lifetime is the most opportune time for the rest of humanity as we know it to practice love because the the collective is healing its own karma. So that denser energy, if you can heal that denser energy within yourself, you can heal it in others. And when we go from PTSD up to Christ consciousness, that top part, that's where the density in our psyche is. So many people come up and find it kind of an equilibrium. But if you know how to work with that denser energy, you can, that's the last mile. That's the, that's where you go from a hundred thousand watts to 500 billion watts. <laughs> that's, that's the good stuff. But um, there's a pacing to it when you, when you work with denser energies, it, um, you, it, it's really quite eloquent. It doesn't come instantly. Nobody goes from uh, from never practicing energy work to being able to remove really dense stuff. Even uh, archangels and very powerful beings. It, it's um, I I suggest it has to be a, a personal choice kind of journey because as you clean out your psyche you're changing how you're experiencing your life. The energy within you dictates the world you see outside of you. And no divine being 
will move you out of kindergarten and put you into a master's program. That's not how, we're here for the human experience. We're here for this to have the experience. And so there's no, that no divinity will come drag us to some other part in our journey. It has to be us that wants it. Now, Les, I know your most recent book, Citizen King, The New Age of Power, was published by Balboa Press in, in 2015. Share with our listeners about your new book. What's, what are you writing about? <laughs> How to kick some divine ass. Um, the... Um, in, in this storyline, so what would happen if Jesus had Twitter? What would happen if Gandhi had, I mean, we're in such a rich environment. We're in such a rich environment that perhaps hasn't been uh, uh, copied in our history. Certainly there's been some very pronounced cultures in our past, but here and now our phones, we can ask a question of our phones and have the answer in a minute. We can, we can text, we can tweet the planet in a second. Citizen King is about personal sovereignty. Do you have permission? Do you have permission? Is it divinely ordained that you can, you can be a powerful person? Do you have dominion? Do you have dominion to show up in a powerful way? These aren't common questions. And does your ego understand that your soul and your heart is the place of power? And does your ego understand how flippin' cool your life will get if your ego steps out of the way and your heart and your soul can run your every day? That's when the ego gets off the hook. It's really a very sweet thing. The egos kind of suck at divine orchestration. They're symbol processors. They sit and watch the past. And, and by default, egos don't have the wherewithal. They weren't ever designed to be a divine persona. And your heart and your soul know how to do that. So Citizen King is about how to embody the, the divine idea of you as a spiritual persona in this karmic soup of our collective consciousness. And then when you choose to be a compassionate, loving persona, then when people dream really big dreams, you show up. And um, what, what I really like about the book is in order for you to stay powerful, you have to stay authentic. And it was designed that way. So you can be a very powerful person and go get a tattoo and chug the organic whiskey and have a cigar. There's no divine rules as far as what that looks like. And if you can stay genuinely, genuinely authentic to your heart and soul's persona, you can live, you can play out that divine power in any way that you choose. That's, that's how the whole system has been designed from the beginning. Now, in 2013, you wrote Personal Power Fundamentals. Um, what is that book about? It's about power, your power, your relationship to karma and your relationship to love. If you want to get past your plateau, if you want to embody your potential, uh, Personal Power Fundamentals explains how we take on karma what we can do to release karma. And once we've released karma, how can we create at, at a much higher level with our energy? Um, so personal power fundamentals really nails down what's this human experience? It's a timeless story, really. Karma is very impersonal. Karma is totally impersonal. Um, it, it's a relationship with your own consciousness. Personal Power Fundamentals shows you how to bring that higher wisdom down, how to purify your persona, and how to conduit love without um, freaking out <laughs> when powerful things start to happen. Now, I know, Les, when I'm doing karmic healing, there's certain common issues that I feel that, you know, everyone could 
do well to receive a healing about. For example, I feel like everyone needs to clear their karma of feeling not good enough or not deserving. So, sure. you know, or um, another big one is broken heart or wounded spirit. These are very common karmas that we carry through as human beings, but you can heal them. In your perspective, because we're talking about karma and the energy healing that you do, what are common issues that you feel that everyone could benefit from doing a healing about? Um, to get over the idea that they're a human being, to get over an idea that their ego is perceiving their potential. Your ego cannot even comprehend your potential. Um, we're, we're very, very powerful beings. So we're coming out of the dark ages, if you will, of, of karma and, and human experience. Our mythology really has but a handful of examples of very powerful beings. Um, certainly what you've talked about, uh, those attributes are very common on this planet, but love can, can heal, love can resolve any karmic imprinting that exists. Your soul is really genuinely t timeless. And over time, lifetimes, you'll return back to the light and you will, you will return to divinity itself without any karmic imprint. It's a, it's a timeless story, really. Now, I know that uh, your radio show, I believe, is called New Human Living, correct? Yes. So what is your vision? If you could explain to our listeners at the Natural Healing Show, what is, when you talk about new human living, what do you mean by that? Legions of Jesuses, Gandhis, Buddhas, Krishnas, legions. Jesus said, you guys will do everything I'll do. Well, what the hell, let's get to it. When we, when we, um, what I love about the new human living radio show is we're not afraid to look at every single aspect there is from, from uh, harvesting the Akashic records to light body um, work. We talked with Dean Radin, the chief scientist of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, and he talked about flat out light and, and the uh, 25 yogas that were taught that gave people super normal power. I mean, it's hardwired in our human story and new human living is not afraid to look at all of it because as multidimensional beings, it's not going to be our Western academics that, that really teaches about our multidimensional aspects. That's not going to happen. It's not going to come from there. It's going to come from the fringe people that discover it for themselves or discover it from our history and then turn around and re-embody that. Now, I know that you do energy healing for a living. So here at the Natural Healing Show, we want to get really good ideas from our guests so that our listeners can go out and apply this. If you ha had to say your top five suggestions about how to be really, really radiantly healthy naturally, what would they be? Um, five, huh? Off the top. Don't take anything personally. Your, your karma is a, a, a script that your soul wrote. It has nothing to do with uh, who you are as an essence. So, so whatever the lessons you're going through and whoever is teaching you those lessons, the villains, the scoundrels, the scallywags on the planet are here to wake us up. And everything they're doing to us is not personal. It's part of an agreement. Um, that's one, learn to love everything you can. Mm -hmm. So you, you turn on the TV and there's all these people doing atrocious things. If you can't see love there, go find a place you can see love. Look at a child on a playground trying to figure out how to put his, his jacket on or uh, some, you know, uh, a puppy or, um, the smell of coffee in the morning or the the smell of a coastal breeze on the uh, by the ocean uh, learn to love more and more things as you go through the day learn how to ground yourself 
how to stay present in your body when emotions come up. So you're at work and somebody comes into the, the meeting and they're mad and you feel your emotions get stirred. Oh, just stay in the feeling. Don't suppress them. Let them come up. It doesn't feel very good. Let them come up. Get comfortable feeling uncomfortable. And instead of shutting it down and pushing it down and posturing, just stay in it, and that affords it to be released. Um, see yourself as a timeless soul. You're going to learn every single lesson that's in front of you, period. You can't do it wrong. It's impossible for you to do it wrong because you have forever to do it. So get, light yourself off the hook. You haven't screwed up. Nobody's broken a karmic law. Nobody has broken a karmic law. You're innocent. You're safe. You're free. You're free to show up in a powerful way. And then playfulness, uh, imagination. Um, allow yourself to dream, to see outside of the norm. Your eyes show you this constant patterning of the 3D world and your ego believes it to be the truth. There's fields of miracles in this energetic environment that we live in and your imagination will see it before your Western mind will see it. So loosey goosey in the noggin is a really good thing to do. Don't take yourself seriously. Be playful like a child. It, you know, um, go stomp in the mud after a storm or draw a picture with your mustard on your plate after dinner and, and get out of that, that mental stigma that you know what's going on. This idea that your Western mind knows what's going on, that's laughable. And that's, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. You've been listening to the wonderful insights of energy healer, author, and radio host, Les Jensen. You can find out more about him and his work at newhumanliving.com and lesjensen.com. This is Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, sign up for my newsletters and find out more about how you can be healthy naturally. And remember, when you take care to balance your energy body, that translates down into radiant health. Thank you so much for listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio.